What's the word, y'all? Second day of the NBA season, man, and I forgot how hard it is to watch 11 games. <laughs> like, I had a four box here, a two box there. The Bulls hit their own screen because it's the Bulls and we're going 82 and no. So it was definitely tough. With that being said, there are some games out there that I did not get to watch, but don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, we have tons. We have over a thousand games this NBA season. So I might not talk about your favorite team today, but in due time, let's talk about the things that I saw. Leave a like, subscribe. Yesterday, we gained like a thousand subscribers. So shout out to all the new people coming over. Let's continue that trend, man, because we are dropping these recaps, reaction videos until I don't want to do it anymore, which hopefully is the end of the season, I don't know. I can't say every day, let, let, let's, let's be honest. But you understand. Celtics versus Knicks was the game of the day. Obviously, it went to double overtime. It was in the Mecca of basketball. We had celebrities all over the place. The crowd was chanting Obi's, Obi's name. It was just a really good game. I cannot believe the Knicks even allowed it to go to overtime. The last minute of regulation is it was just ridiculous. Jalen Brown pulling up for the logo. Um, Kemba Walker biting on the layup when he were up by three and letting Marcus Smart hit the, hit the shot. Ridiculous. Luckily for them, they walked out of there with the win and gave the fans what they wanted, which is a very good game. Now, I saw some good things from both sides. I know that the Boston Celtics are losing this game, but I think they could walk away with this smiling about some of the things that went on. The first thing, the two centers that played in this game, Robert Williams, Mitchell Robson, these are two players that we knew um, for the first couple years of their career that they were are good defensive players. The only problem with these two players is that they couldn't stay on the floor because they were very, very foul happy. Um, Robert Williams played 45 minutes, one foul. Mitchell Robinson played 34 minutes, two fouls. That is a huge W. And I'll be trying to explain to people that transitioning as a big in the NBA is maybe more difficult than like a wing or, I, I don't know, guard and big can probably be on the same level. But it is hard to come into the league and be a very good big man. For a lot of these big men, bro, they relied on their athleticism, their length, their height for the entirety of their careers. And now they get to the NBA where everybody is the same size as them. Everybody's as athletic. Mitchell Robinson can't just jump out of the gym and block three shots in a row like that anymore. So he played more discipline. Robert played more discipline, and they both walked out here with wins, individual wins. Now, the, the Celtics definitely could have used um, more bodies, more bigger bodies, because Julius Randle for the first four quarters of this game was amazing, and they didn't really have that much of an option. Al Horford would have definitely helped if he was there. Um, but again, Mitchell, I mean, uh, Robert Williams tried to do his best. Jalen Brown, I was so close to changing my shirt because I got his juice label uh, uh, sweatshirt. He was incredible today. There's a tweet from like 2018 where I'm like, I would love to have a Jalen Brown player on my team, and he is just one of my favorite young players in this league to think about just a couple days ago he was um fighting a virus and today he drops 46 points in 46 minutes think about the amount of conditioning jason tatum caught the same virus and that's how you know we're not talking about that um jason tatum caught the same virus and had to work with an inhaler for like six some months Jay LeBron got over like that and was able to play a ton of minutes. Now, the only thing I didn't like about it, you could tell that majority of the players that were on the court didn't have the legs. We talked about the first game of the season. Yeah, they played some preseason, yada, yada. Nothing really gives you in game shape other than playing like real games. So nobody was ready to play a double overtime game. And you saw that because uh, Jalen Brown like missed a wide open dunk. Jason Tatum had two possessions in a row where he airballed. And I know people are overreacting to Jason Tatum shooting seven for 30, which don't even look like a real like field goal percentage thing um but it ain't i didn't see nothing i was like oh this is crazy a lot of credit to rj barrett because he was on an island with jason tatum for the entirety of the game and he he really clamped them up but some of the shots majority of the shots that i saw jason tatum missing this game feels like shots he's made a thousand times in his career today was just an extreme and i mean an extreme off night i would have loved for them to get Jalen brown more involved in that second overtime but maybe there was something going on in the huddle with jb's like bro i'm gassed Jason, please, it's, it's up to you. And Jason tried to do the responsibilities. Um, again, when the team gets healthy, I believe they're going to be good. I mean, they're relying on some players who should be maybe lower in rotation of players getting bigger minutes. Al Horford coming back is going to significantly help. But let's talk about the Knicks because New York Knicks basketball is still on cloud now, ladies and gentlemen. Like I mentioned earlier, Julius Randle playing four quarters of great basketball, but you know his legs was gone in the overtime. He gave it to Mr. Um, overpaid, and Mr. Overpaid, Evan Fournier, went out and hooped his butt. But off, man, that overtime, I think it was like seven for seven from the field for not just the Knicks, but for the Celtics. They were going back and forth, back and forth. But when it mattered the most, the Knicks were able to close it out. At one point, Jericho Sims was in the game. Like I said, I have four games here, two games there, the Bulls game here. And I'm trying to watch everything, but you don't get to see every substitution. And I look over. Like, what the, why the, why is Jericho Sims getting minutes right now? And I think immediately he got thrown a lob and he hit one of his free throws. So whatever. 
um good win for the knicks obi top getting minutes and playing as good as he did was was um a big step in the right direction because you know as a rookie he had some expectations from nba fans because he was one of the older rookies in the class and a lot of people say he was the most nba ready of anybody in the class and it just so happened that julius randall was having a breakout season an all-star all nba season so there weren't that many minutes at his position and as they're trying to compete for a playoff spot compete to be one of the top seeds there's not a lot of room for tom thibodeau to throw obi Toppin in the game and be like hey get your reps in so he had a full off season under his belt and hopefully he can be a quality rotational player for them for this season Big win for the New York Knicks. Man, it feels good to just talk about basketball. The next game we are talking about is the LaMelo Ball Charlotte Hornets comeback. This was one of the games where they were, the, the Indiana Pacers were up at like 20 at one point. And what I decided to do, because another game was coming on, I think the Philly game was about to come on. You get four on one screen, I push the Pacers to the side. Now, when I, when I push a team to the side, it was a game on that I'm not watching. I'm refreshing, checking scores. And then they went on that run. At one point, I think it was eight minutes left in... in the third quarter, it was still a 20-point game. They, LaMelo, listen, I, I, I know LaMelo is like loved and hated because of how much buzz he gets or he got throughout the course of like his being a freshman in high school, even before that, and now being an NBA player. A lot of people don't like LaMelo Ball because of that, because of his father, things like that. You cannot deny results. This man was unstoppable today. And if he has really come around with his three-point shot, not, not that it was bad before, but if he can get really consistent with his flat-footed three-point shot, it's over with, bro. <laughs> like, he is going to develop into a superstar. I mean, he had already been one of the better playmakers in the entire league based off his rookie season. And if the shooting and scoring is coming along with it, hey, they got something special with Charlotte, man. Um, Gordon Hayward, new hairdo. He had designs on the side and stuff. I don't know. Was he rocking that last year? Big shots. He had a bank shot late in the game. I'm like, oh, he, he called that. He called that. And no major surprise to me because I didn't really know what type of t what teams were going to um roll out when it comes to starting lineups. So when I saw the tweet that, that Miles Bridges was going to start over P.J. Watts, I was like, oh, that's very interesting because I do love the LaMelo Ball, Miles Bridges, like, connection. Miles Bridges, really big for them today. And even though P.J. only played 19 minutes, he shot one for seven. He had two free throws. Or what they said, P.J. with two beauties. One of my favorite calls, the two beauties after some free throws. Get hyped about free throws. And then at the last possession, he was the one guarding some bonus and got the stop. So, um, Miles Bridges, starting power forward, did not get his rookie extension, so we'll see in restricted free agency um, how well he plays and what that can mean for his his future. Um, uh, Kelly Oubre didn't have a good shooting night, but he came up during that run. They really, really put it together, man. It's Smith. Oh, my God. I don't know how I got this far in, and I mentioned it's Smith. Somebody said, or who was, whoever was calling the play, I, I wish I knew every commentator's name was like, it's Smith is so fast, he'd be the second person in the revolving door and end up out of the revolving door first, or something similar to that, which is facts. That man, Ish Smith, was like 30-something years old and still one of the fastest players in the league, and you saw that he had a little moment where he, I think he scored eight straight points by himself before the first half ended, and they used some of that momentum into the second half, and it was just a good game for them. For the Pacers, though, they did end this game, lose this game. Um, another, like, collapse. There's no way around it. It was a huge collapse for them, being up by 20 with about 16 minutes left in the game, and you lose that game. Not the greatest sign. Um, uh, Miles Turner, not really getting any PT in the fourth quarter was surprising to me. Rick Carlisle, new coach, trying to figure out his rotations. He's obviously missing some players um, because TJ Warren and, and Karis LeVert are out, which means that uh, Jeremy Lamb gets minutes, and it just felt like Jeremy Lamb was running around there and taking shots that he shouldn't be taking, and hopefully he comes around because I used to really like Jeremy Lamb, and I know he dealt with some bigger injuries, and that might have derailed his career, but Jeremy Lamb low-key was one of the players I actually really like. DeMont Sabonis as unstoppable as possible. That's the only thing about the Charlotte Hornets team, or not the only thing, but the biggest thing about the Charlotte Hornets team when I watch them, um, I think that a lot of good big men are going to give them the work. Now, Sabonis is definitely one of the best big men with a 33-15 um, and, and two stat line, but I feel like a lot of good big men in the league are going to do similar things to them. Chris Diorte, I don't know how I haven't mentioned him, Chris Diorte out of nowhere? Like, listen, I knew the Chris Diorte taking hoop. I watched him in preseason. I didn't expect him to hoop to this guy. I don't know if anybody expected him to come out in his first official game. First of all, to start. I didn't expect that. But to start and give them 27 on amazing efficiency, he was having fun. He was smiling out there, at least 
when they were up by 20. <laughs> when they were about 20, he was smiling. Like, after that, I can't really say anything. But he was putting it on the floor. It was one time at, like, the end of a quarter, end of a shot clock, he, like, waved everybody off and pulled up in somebody's face. I'm like, bro, yeah, he might be 32 years old, but that don't matter if he's giving you 27 points as a rookie. Malcolm Brogdon got extended and had a, a solid game, but they completely, completely collapsed. Not a, not a great night for them, but some good things to take away with Chris Diorte or Chris Dorte, depending on which um, which commentator broadcast you were watching. The Bulls got a very ugly win. Um, very, very ugly win. The entire time I was like, bro, can we please pull away from this team? Um, the, the Detroit Pistons are going to be in these games a lot. A lot of this happened last year with the Detroit Pistons, too. They ended up being a bad team when it came to, like, the overall record. But there were a ton of games last year where the Detroit Pistons were in the game until the last five, six minutes. Then it falls apart, whether that be by design or not. I know this wasn't by design. Nobody comes to game number one and, like, it's time to tank. Um, it just so happened that they didn't have, like, Kay Cunningham. You know, having Kay Cunningham helps there. Helps there. Um, but the Bulls' defense was one of the bright spots for me. It was not a very pretty win, but we got the win nonetheless. Vucevic was very frustrated the entire game game but continue to like force up shots DeMar DeRozan was forcing up some shots but Zach Levine and Alice Caruso won us this game Lonzo Ball in the fourth quarter was huge actually I don't know how I cannot talk about him whether it be him getting a couple rebounds um or him getting steals or hitting shots he was huge huge in this game and it's it feel good for us to win a game to be over 500 for the first time since 2017. The first um, season opening game that we've won since 2016. We have been down bad for a long time. Um, and though it was not pretty, hopefully we can take that winning men mentality and come into Friday's game, which I will be at, and win a game. Shout out to Ayo DeSumo getting um, NBA minutes. Oh, also, Killian Hayes was terrible. Not the, not, not the best. Hopefully he can get it around because... Last year, not good. He had a little stretch after his injury where he came in. He's averaging like nine points, nine assists, which is good. Um, summer league was not good. Preseason was not good. And then starts off this game, first game of the season, 0 for 6. Zero points. And do, hopefully hopefully something can turn around with him, man. I, I, I like what I saw from him coming into the draft. So the fact that he has not been able to do pretty much anything at the NBA level was kind of depressing to me. Let's talk about the big ball cat calves. Oh, we got sex land and the big ball calves. Ooh, I'm liking that. They started with three centers. Now, I remember when they signed Laurie Market and people were like, yeah, we're going to run Laurie at the three. I'm like, no, you not. I watched Laurie Market for four years. Running him at the three is a terrible idea. They did it today. You know, the, the top pick, one of the top picks that they drafted last year coming off the bench um, for the seven foot guy that has zero lateral quickness. But guess what? Team didn't look bad. And a lot of that has to do with Evan Mobley being as versatile as he was. He had the, other than Chris Diorte, off the top of my head, he had the best rookie um, uh, debut, again, other than Chris, um, with a stat line of 17, 6 assists, 9 rebounds, did not turn the ball over, and shot 54% from the field. He was incredible. Jared Allen, incredible. I low-key liked what I saw from this team. I know as a Bulls fan, a lot of Bulls fans hate the Cavs right now because... Alari Marketing and Denzel Valentine be making, like, Instagram posts, like, talking trash about the Bulls. I can't live in that boat. I can't <laughs> I can't hate an organization because a few players been talking trash. I don't do that. Um, I liked what I saw. Yes, they, they lost this game. Yeah, they lost this game. I liked that they had in the crazy amount of How many assists they end up with? Because they were swinging that ball. 38 assists with the Cavs. Everybody talking about Kyle Sexton and Darius Garland. These players don't be, you know, not Darius Garland. But Kyle Sexton being a ball stopper and they don't have anybody to play make outside Darius Garland. A ton of assists. Ricky, Ru Ricky Rubio off the bench. Double-double. I like what I saw from them. Do I think they about to go out there and make a ton of noise? No. But I think they could be a fun league pass team, bro. Especially if Evan Mobley's going to be as good as he was today. As good as he was today. Um, But, <laughs> but, my most improved player pick, which people laughed at me for, again, is one game out of 82. Um, John ja Morant. Demetrius Ja Morant. Incredible. And he only shot two free throws and ended up with 37 points. A freak of nature. It was, again, I got the four games on, and I, I'm watching him. He dunked the ball. I'm like, all right, okay, the Bulls game is coming down to the wire. I look back over. He get a steal. He landed up. That was like three seconds, four points. He was incredible today. I can't even explain it. There was no solution to John Morant, and I feel like a lot of teams are going to run into that. There's not a lot of solutions for John Morant. Desmond Bain, DeAnthony Melton, these are two guys that got brought into the lineup and moved slow-mo to the bench. Slow-mo was really good for them last year. So the fact that these two are starting, you can tell that Taylor Jenkins really, really trusts these young guys, and, and they showed up today. Um, Jaron didn't have a good shooting night, but he stayed on the floor. 
what was that two fouls another guy that's known for fouling extreme amounts stayed on the floor and ended up getting his win but a lot of that was just John Morant highlight after John Morant highlight and John Morant highlight and I'm low-key I'm gonna have to talk to my people over at House of Highlights because they posted a few of them they ain't posted enough of, enough of them we talking like 15 minutes of highlights it felt like bro John Morant was like that next game now this game was definitely hit or miss for me because I watched a chunk of it but it got to the point where it was out of hand and I stopped watching it we're talking about the Minnesota Timberwolves versus the Houston Rockets oh man the big three and yeah I'm saying big three because they're the best three players showed they bust today you know them boys was hooping um anthony edwards look as confident as ever and that's saying something considering it's anthony anthony edwards be getting interviews talking about i can swim like michael phelps i'm i'm tiger woods on on the on the holes on, on the golf but didn't know who a rob was you know what i'm saying we talk about the dude that 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 sweats confidence and he looked even more confident today. And that was just amazing. Carthony Towns had a mission today. He ended up with 30 on 73% shooting. Defensively, Jaden McDaniels, Josh, uh, Josh Kobe everywhere. And that was one of the major questions we had about this team. We knew they'd have players on their team that could score. D'Angelo Russ could score. Uh, Cat, Ant-Man, they can all score. But who's going to be there to help get stops? And Jaden McDaniels ended up with a stat line of three points, three blocks, four steals, four rebounds. Didn't have to play garbage time. They let the garbage time. You know, Jalen Noel gets some minutes in here and there. Hey, it's game one against, um, against you know, probably the worst team in the league. But that is the type of momentum this team is going to need. Anthony Edwards, really good. Carson Towns, really good. And D'Angelo Russell as third fiddle, really good. I, I like that D'Angelo Russell is the third best player at this point and not look to be the second best player. I do believe that Ant-Man's about to hit another step. And I do believe Carson Towns, obviously, is the best player on the team. Um... Not a lot of great takeaways that come from that Houston Rockets part that I watched. Kevin Porter Jr. is a guy that a lot of people had to win most improved player. In game number one, he looked like he was struggling to make the simplest of passes. Struggling to even dribble the ball. And that's not going to happen for 81 straight games after this. But it's just something to keep an eye on. Jalen Green, a guy that's going to take a lot of shots. And he might not be as efficient as you want him to be. Um, but we shall see. Another game that I get to watch a ton of, but I did tune in at the exact right time. With four con cork moss turned into Stephen Wardell Curry. He was hooping, which is great. I feel like Forkai Korkmaz has a few moments like this every single season. Sometimes it even happens in the playoffs where he is on fire and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, the Pelicans ended up losing this game. I didn't hate what the Pelicans were doing out there. You know, Jonas Valanciunas missed a ton of like gimme putbacks and things like that. And people might look at his stat line and be like, oh, they just extended. That dude, it wasn't that bad. Like, like the eye test was not that bad. I, like a lot of those shots that he was taking, he's going to be making throughout the course of this season. But for the most part, Philly looked Dare I say good? You know, Tyrese Maxey, first NBA start, 20 points, a little dub. Hit some threes. Listen, if hey, if the 76 starts off this season and they're they're winning good games, um, or we're winning games against good teams now, the Pelicans, of course, missing Zion, so they're missing their best player or one of their best players, um, their best player. Um, so we'll see what happens when they go against the top end talent. But if they can consistently be good, I, I bet Daryl Morey, I bet Daryl Morey and the ownership and Elton Brand and them will be like, okay, maybe we'll settle trading Ben Simmons for some good quality role players. Because it seems like they got some things going on here, and it could just be elevated by having a deeper bench. George Niang, big for them, replacing the Mike Scott minutes with a guy that actually still hits his shots. Um, Danny Green was doing cardio, but it's Danny Green, so we love it. Uh, Joel Lebede only had to play 25 minutes, which is a good thing. I don't want Joel playing 40 minutes a game because then you get to the playoffs and he can't play. Uh, but like I said, I didn't hate the things that the Pelicans were doing. I, I don't I don't think, you know, this is something the Pelicans should be overreacted to. They lost the game. That's fine. Denver came to play. Um, and one of the big questions when they played against the Suns in the playoffs was what would happen if they were at least relatively healthy? We're not even talking about Jamal Murray, but if P.J. Dozier... Or, or Will Barton were healthy, and this might have been a sign of what could have could have been. Uh, P.J. Dozier, this team just has so many players that you. I feel like you could just throw in with Jokic, and you'd be like, yes, that's good enough to be a playoff team. And you, sh they showed that today. First half wasn't the most beautiful half for them, but something happened in that second half. They made some adjustments, and Jokic wasn't even looked at to play, make two assists. Is that a career low? I, like, I took the over on the assist. I was like, yeah, you're going to make it happen. Nah, he went into a complete score mode and decided to do that. I was I was low-key hating that Michael Porter Jr. is playing so selfish, so, uh, so unselfishly. How about you take more shots, Mr. Efficiency? 
How about we do? How about we do that? You know what I'm saying? How about we do that? Um, just overall, they look they look really good. Will the three old trio Barton with a dub. Uh, the Green Bros, even though they're not really bros, came in and played some quality minutes. Um, and the Suns just didn't look ready to hoop today. They started off really solid. DeAndre Aiden was really good in the first quarter, and then they completely stopped giving him the ball, and he stopped being as aggressive on the offensive side of the ball, and then everything kind of fell onto itself. Nothing to overreact to, though. And then lastly, I watched the ending of the Kings versus the, Dra the Trailblazer game, and I actually do want to go back and watch a bulk of this, because I see the Harrison Barnes end up with eight threes, and they were showing the highlights in the last couple minutes. It seemed like all of those were open, so I need to see what was happening on the defensive side of the ball for the Trailblazers, um, because if you do not remember... In the offseason, Neil O'Shea say, hey, us being a terrible defense was not a testament to the roster. It was about coaching. And you gave up eight open threes, made threes to Harrison Barnes. I mean, you almost pulled it out because you have some dogs in your team. You had you had Damian Lillard not hit a three. So that's not going to happen too often in the season. That's why you're not going to overreact to the offensive side. But the defensive things has to, has to tighten up, man. Luckily, CJ and Yusuf Nurkis was there to make this a game, but you got to get better on the defensive side of the ball. Swiper was was really good, apparently. Again, I got to go and watch this, the entirety of this game because I need to see how the heck Harrison Barnes ended up with eight open threes at the minimum. I mean, he ended up attempting 11. I'm guessing he wasn't taking contested. So, yeah, like I said, there are some games in here that I did not get to watch, like Toronto Raps versus the Wizards. I didn't get to watch it, but I did see the, the ceremony or the video um, because the fans were finally able to watch the the Raptors and Scotiabank Arena for the first time in 600 days. 600 days. So they end up getting spanked, but um, but at least the fans were there. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to them. And I made a tweet a couple days ago where I was like, I'm going to watch more Spurs games this season. And I do like players on the Magic, but seeing them play against each other, I couldn't do it. So yeah, next game, I'll be watching those teams. I saw Obama had a good game. But other than that, I don't really know what happened in those. Let me know what you think in the comment section. First days. Um, tomorrow, we got eat some more teams that we're going to get first impressions of. And I'm excited to talk about those. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see y'all. Peace.